Franklin County 901. Um, yes, sir. We've got a gentleman on Grove Street and Madison that just got shot. Um, I'm in Kaufman. I'm by the Annex building. Oh my, oh my God, it's Mark Hassey. 57-year-old Mark Hassey is shot and killed in the same place he's made a living for the past three years. A member of the Kaufman DA's office called me and she told me that Mark Hassey had been gunned down on the courthouse steps. And of course, that upset me. I had just spent time with Mark, so it, it, it was a blow. He was a wonderful man, a wonderful man. Mark was uh, very well liked. Uh, he was a friend to everybody. And, uh, oh, more than anybody knows. One of our main witnesses talked about seeing him walk across the parking lot and a man dressed in all black came up to him. There was some type of confrontation between them. And then she said it, he pulled out a gun and heard Mark say, no, no, please, no. And then the, the gunshots. Witnesses said that the suspect got into the uh, passenger seat and the car drove off. So there had to be somebody else involved here. Prosecutors like Mark Hassey can make a lot of enemies. Some are dangerous, a few are deadly. All of them are now suspects. Detectives start with someone they know well, Eric Williams. Eric Williams was an interesting and well-known character in Kaufman County. He had served time in the military. He was a successful lawyer. He was a part-time police officer. And he got elected as judge in Kaufman County. To the majority of his colleagues, being law-abiding is a basic job requirement. And six months into his first term, it was discovered in an investigation that Eric Williams was stealing computer terminals from his offices. And there was really no explanation for taking those terminals. Anything else that you think that you may have taken? Or... I can't think of anything. Okay. That investigation led to his arrest and a felony trial in which Mark Cassie was the lead prosecutor and Mike McClellan assisted in that prosecution. Eric Williams lost his bench as a judge and he lost his law license. He lost a lot when he was convicted of that crime. When investigators question Williams just hours after the murder, he denies everything. They asked Eric Williams if he would submit to uh, testing for gunshot residue, and he agreed. If Williams fired a gun that morning, a GSR test will show it. And they took samples from his hands and then submitted those to the lab. They didn't find any admissions, no witnesses identify him at the scene, so they couldn't really connect him to the scene. The negative GSR test takes the wind out of their sails. Investigators are left with their suspicions, but not much else. Williams is off the hook. The investigators looked at everything. They're turning over uh, every stone, every log. They looked at every case that Mark Hassey investigated skinheads, drug dealers. Every name that comes up, if it even looks uh, halfway interesting, it's getting checked out. The leads dry up like Texas in July. We weren't making any headway. I mean, I was frustrated. My coworkers were frustrated. Mark's boss, Mike McClellan, takes it the hardest. Mike was visibly upset. And when you roll, friendship and frustration into it. It can snowball emotionally, I think. As we got close to two months after Mark's murder, the investigation was kind of dead in the water. I think people were starting to wonder whether this case would ever be solved. And then out of the blue on the Easter weekend, we got the shock of our lives. Mike and his wife, Cynthia, try to put their grief and worry aside, at least for the upcoming Easter holiday. The Friday night before Easter, Cynthia's daughter, Christina, calls her mother. It was the normal conversation. It was, bye, I'll talk to you tomorrow. 
I yelled bye to Mike, Mike yelled bye to me. The next day, one of Cynthia's friends is worried. She hasn't heard from Cynthia. She asks her son, a Dallas police officer, to check on Mike and Cynthia. I probably took two steps in the residence, and what I didn't realize was I just stepped over some shell casings that were right underneath my feet. Inside the house, Mike and Cynthia are in the living room, shot to death. I don't think anybody could believe this was happening, where you have a prosecutor and the elected district attorney and his wife murdered within two months of one another. That just doesn't happen. In the days after Mark's death, his murder could have been connected to one of a number of things. But now we had the DA, Mike McClellan, gunned down too on the heels of Mark's murder. I think everyone had the same thought. There's got to be a common denominator. It's got to be someone they prosecuted together. And Mark and Mike only prosecuted one case together. And that was Eric Williams. Eric Williams, the former judge that Mark and Mike prosecuted for theft. An informant reaches out to police. I got a phone call from a friend of Eric Williams who said, hey, I don't know if this is important, but I rented a storage unit in my name, and Eric Williams has his guns there. And that led us to Eric Williams' secret storage unit. It seemed like it took forever to finally cut the lock and open that door. It was just in slow motion, almost. And we see this door coming up. And we see a white bumper. Everybody is staring at this beautiful white Crown Victoria. After the murders, the Crown Vic was identified as the vehicle coming down the McClellan Street. And it was like a neon sign just shining. And there were some high fives and uh, maybe a couple of hell yes, because we knew that we had found what we was looking for. Inside the unit, there were also many boxes which contained all kinds of weapons and ammunition. No murder weapon, but the cartridges from the storage unit give them one more shot at linking Williams to the killings. The firearms expert matched those spent shell casings found at the McClellan murder, which connected the murder weapon to Eric Williams. Between the Crown Vic and the shell casings, the walls are starting to close in on Eric Williams. Yet there's still one question to answer. If Williams was a shooter, then who was the driver? To answer that question, investigators look inside the four walls of Williams' own home where they find Eric's wife, Kim. Investigators bring in Eric Williams' better half. After three hours of interrogation, Kim Williams' defenses start to crack. She had a physical reaction and dropped her head and said, uh, you wouldn't understand. And then the pieces all started coming together after that. Nearly two years after the three murders in Kaufman County, former Judge Eric Williams is back in the courtroom as a defendant. Eric Williams will first be tried for killing Cynthia McClellan. Cynthia McClellan was the most innocent victim involved. The jury would identify her as a mother, as an aunt, as an, an innocent citizen who was murdered in cold blood. So psychologically, we felt that was the best victim to show exactly how dangerous Eric Williams was. The prosecution calls up a long list of witnesses. Mr. Shedd, please come to the front of the courtroom. One name not called, Kim Williams, Eric's wife and alleged getaway driver. We always knew that Kim Williams could come in at any moment and testify, yeah, he was the guy. Prosecutors want to save Kim's testimony against her husband for the penalty phase, where it will have the most impact. 
The sworn testimony she gave in the case you're not hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. Yes. Hold your hand, take a seat, and quit the stand. For the first time since their arrest, Kim Williams faces the man who led her down a dark path. When Kim Williams took the stand, I was on the edge of my seat. He mentioned that he would like to kill them. He just kept talking about it and kept talking about it. Why did you agree to drive to the murder of Mark Hassey? I so believed in Eric and everything that he told me. His anger was my anger. Kim takes the jury step by step into the killing of Mark Hassey and Mike and Cynthia McClellan. Did he describe to you the final moments in McClellan's life? He didn't tell me about Mike, but he told me about Mrs. McClellan. What did he tell you about how Cynthia McClellan died? He told me that he had to shoot her an extra time because she was still moaning. What is the mood and demeanor in that white crown Victoria as y'all are leaving the McClellan murder scene? Happy satisfaction. After seven days of testimony, this Texas jury will now decide whether Eric Williams lives or dies. I can tell you that was one long night that that jury stayed out deliberating. The question is settled by the next morning. The jury shuffles in. Mr. Williams, the jury having found you guilty of the offense of capital murder, it's now the duty of this court to assess your punishment of death. Nine days later, Kim Williams pleads guilty to murder. She gets 40 years in prison with the possibility of parole after 20 years.